Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at the three kinds of knowledge. Now, one of the four famous paradoxes offered by Eubulides, along with the liar's paradox and the paradox of the heap, was the hooded man paradox, also known as the masked man paradox. So imagine a man is walking towards you with a hood over his head. Do you know who the man is? Surely not. Now imagine that the man reveals that he is now your father. You surely know your father, and you knew your father even when you didn't know who the man was. So how could you both know and not know this man. You know him because he was your father, but you don't know him because he was wearing a hood. This paradox plays on a subtle difference in what we mean when we use the word know. We may mean knowledge of, as in to be acquainted with someone or something, or we may mean knowledge that, as in knowing, in, knowing whether a particular proposition is true or not. The paradox relies on an equivocation between these two types of knowledge. You know of your father, you are acquainted with him, but you may not know that the man walking towards you in a hood is your father. Now, there may be a question of, well, do you know of the man? Are you acquainted with the man that's walking towards you? Yes, you are, because the man walking towards you is your father. But you don't know that you are acquainted with the man that is walking towards you. So, there's the difference. In this video, we're briefly going to outline the three broad types of knowledge that philosophers are talking about when they use the word knowledge. Knowledge that, knowledge of, and knowledge how. So, usually when philosophers are talking about knowledge, they're talking about knowledge that... Knowledge in this context is what's called a propositional attitude, or an attitude that one has to a proposition. Other kinds of propositional attitudes like this are desire that a certain thing be true. I can desire that I am drinking a glass of water is true. I have an emotion or an attitude towards a proposition that I'm drinking water. I can also know that I'm drinking a glass of water is a true proposition. Generally, philosophers accept that in order to be known, a proposition must be true, be believed by the subject, and be warranted. Though exactly what that warrant looks like can vary from one philosopher to another. I use the word warrant instead of justification because it allows me to include things like get ear to fires and um, externalist explanations of justification or warrant in this case. So you might know that the earth is round, the sky is blue. I'm a skeptic. So I don't know any of those things, and I'm skeptical that you do too, but that's a subject for another video. Next up is knowledge of. The second kind of knowledge is knowledge of. This usually applies to a person. This knowledge can't be perfectly encapsulated in a proposition, like knowledge that. It exists as a relationship between people as opposed to a relationship between a person and a proposition. If you know a person, that may imply that you know a range of facts about them. So to know a person, you may be required to have a certain level of propositional knowledge or knowledge that. But you also likely have things like knowledge how, as in the ability to recognize what they look like or sound like. And in addition to these two things, there's something that's kind of uh, not able to be separated from the idea of knowledge of. You can't irreducible, you can't reduce it just to both knowledge how and knowledge that, which is the idea of reciprocity. If I say that I know Russell Crowe, you would expect at least to a certain degree that he knows me too. If I'm going around a party saying, yeah, I know Russell Crowe, you're not expecting me to be like, yeah, I follow his movies and know a bunch of facts about him. You expect there to be reciprocity, that he knows me as well. I, in the same way, I can't know FDR, even if I know every fact about his life and could recognize him in a photograph. Since I never met him, 
and he can never know me. So, that's knowledge of, and a bit of a case for why it might be have some irreducible elements that can't be pulled out just to knowledge that or knowledge how. Though, there's probably some elements of knowledge that and knowledge how that are necessarily included in there. Finally, we have knowledge how. This is the ability to do something, such as knowledge how to ride a bike or drive a car. It's less clear that this kind of knowledge cannot be reduced to propositional statements. Many have argued, though, that there is a categorical difference as you could read a book about all the facts about how to ride a bike and yet never have ridden a bike and therefore not know how to ride it. So you could know or have justified true belief about all of the propositions regarding how to ride a bike and yet not be able to, not have knowledge how to do something. And so that might be a bit of the case of why knowledge how is not reducible just to knowledge that. Now, because philosophers like to try to reduce everything just to knowledge that, they even try to reduce other propositional attitudes such as desire or hope just to a version of knowledge that, they're going to try to reduce knowledge how and knowledge of to just knowledge that. But I'm skeptical that they can do that. What do you think? Can knowledge how or knowledge of be just reduced to knowledge that? Or are there actually three different kinds of knowledge that we're talking about here? Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.